welcome to today's video where we will explore the world of react life cycle and compare how they translate into world of react hook specifically we will draw parallel between react class component and their life cycle methods and their functional counterpart react hooks whether you are new to the react or looking for research your knowledge this video is for you so let's get started namaste welcome to bit science all of the secrets of life and technology with our comprehensive biology and cambridge science education react class components have various life cycle method that get called at different stages of component life with the introduction of hooks functional components can also manage their state and life cycle effectively let's begin by exploring the component method in react life cycle we will categorize them into three phases the mounting phase the updating phase and unmounting phase First up is the construction phase. The construction method marks the initial step in constructing a component foundation. The mounting phase, we have get derived state from props involves preparing for initial render. The render function breathes life into the component by rendering its UI. Subsequently, the component did mount places the component on the scene. Then we have updating phase, get derived state from props. returns for potential updates the should component update is a decision maker to re-render or not to re-render then we also have then again render initiate another round of rendering if necessary get snapshot before update captures a memory snapshot before changes component did update signifies the component has refresh its appearance then we have unmounting phase here we will have component will unmount serves as a final curtain call we have additional method error handling where component did catch there is a safety net for unexpected mishap let's explore into example and code syntax on one hand we have the react component life cycle class and on the other hand we has react hook life cycle functions so let's explore with constructor constructor are special effect in class component that handle initial setup task we write like this constructor with props in the parameter under that we write super props call the parent constructor for prop inheritance after this you can initialize state or bind method this is where you would initialize state and variable using this dot state or bind event handler using this dot handle trick We will keep render method as this is a common method around mounting and updating phase. Render method describe the component UI structure. This returns JSX element to be displayed. In functional components, use effect serves a similar purpose to constructor. It runs after the component is mounted. The use effect hooks allows functional component to perform side effect, including initialization and cleanup. So how we write use effect is use effect we employ two parameter first by using an array function to define the function body and then an empty array inside the function body the function can contain the code to execute after the component renders then we can return the function which serves as a cleanup mechanism executing before the component unmounts similar to component will unmount life cycle method here we will initialize state or perform side effect code for initializing or other side effect as well second argument is empty array signifies the effect runs only once after the initial render resembling the behavior of constructor at the end we write return statement which is similar to render method this returns jsx element to be displayed now that we have grasped the concept of constructor and its counterpart use effect let's delve deeper into other aspect of react components so how we write this we write static get drive state from props within that we write two parameter next props and previous states it occurs during the both initial render and subsequent updates it also examines next props and previous state then returns an object with state updates now let's see in the react hook 
Use effect can be used to achieve similar behavior to get derived state from props. So how we could rewrite this whole use effect like this. Use effect manages side effect in function component, including state updates based on props. It's called after every render, but can be controlled within a dependency array. It encloses code that relies on props and state, runs after rendering. The get drive from props is used rarely, but sometimes necessary. Let's explore the next component. So our next component is should component update. So this is how we write should component update. Within argument we pass next props and next state. We will return either true or false. Should component update provides final control over re-rendering logic. As React invokes it before every potential re-render. By comparing next prop and next state to the current props and state, we can decide whether to return true for a necessary update or false to skip re-rendering. This method is particularly advantageous for intricate component with resource intensive rendering or complex calculation, enabling performance and optimized by preventing unnecessary re-renders. So now you know the syntax you can use in, in your application. On the functional component side, React memo serves as a higher order component that memoize function component. So how you will write this? We write, we'll create a variable const my memoize component. We'll use react.memo. Within the parameter, we'll use arrow function to create our function. It achieves this by shallowing, comparing props between re-render and trigger. A re-render only props has changed. This approach is well suited for pure function component where the output depends solely on props, helping to avoid redundant re-renders in frequently updated parts of your application. In summary, use react.memo when dealing with pure functional component and aiming to prevent unnecessary re-render in frequently updated section of your application. So next is component did catch. In class component, the component did catch lifecycle method is used for error handling. We would write like component did catch, passing argument, error, and info inside the function. You can handle your errors. This method is called when an error is thrown during the rendering in lifecycle methods or in the constructor of any child component. In functional component, we use use effect hook to achieve similar error handling. Similarly, in use effect, you can use with the arrow function and here you can handle your errors. We would write const handle error to handle the errors. Inside the argument, we will write errors and for. Let's do the implementation of global error handler for the entire application by utilizing the error event on Windows object. We'll employ the window object. We'll add event listener to the global window object for error event. Window dot add event listener inside the argument will write error and the handle error whenever an error occur anywhere in the window including within the react component tree the handler function is triggered then we would return with the removing of the event listener the subsequent line window dot remove event listener within we have error and handler ensures the removal of event listener preventing memory leak the empty render array ensure that the use effect runs only once after the initial render, mimicking the behavior of component dead catch. I hope you have understood how errors are handled in React component lifecycle and React hook lifecycle. Let's move on to next component. In class component, the get snapshot before update lifecycle method is called right before the most recent render output is committed to the DOM. This is how we write get snapshot before update. Within argument, we pass previous props and previous state. It provides a opportunity to the capture information that will pass to the component dead update method. The get snapshot allows you to inspect DOM before the update and returns a value that will pass to the component dead update. This can be useful for scenario like capturing scroll of position or other UI related data. Whereas use effect can be used to replicate the behavior of both get snapshot before update and component date update. In functional component, 
we use the use effect hook to achieve similar effect before the compiled updates. The function pass to use effect can perform side effects and the optional cleanup function can mimic the behavior of component will unmount in case of component unmount. Within the array, you can specify your dependency, ensuring that use effect runs only when these dependencies are updated or when the component is unmounted. Now we have understood get snapshot before update. Let's move on to next component. In class component, the, the component did update lifecycle method is invoked after component state or props have been updated. We write like component did update. Within the argument, we can pass previous props and previous state, giving you the opportunity to perform side effect or additional computations. In functional component, we utilize the use effect to achieve similar behavior. The function inside use effect is executed after the component updates. An optional cleanup function mimics the behavior of component when unmount. When component unmounts or before the next update, both component did update and use effect are designed for executing side effects after the component updates. They provide a way to interact with the updated state or props. However, there are some differences in class component. Component did update has direct access to the previous props in state. Whereas the function component, you can achieve a similar effect by including the relevant dependency in the dependency array. I hope you have understood this syntax. Now you can implement in your application. Now let's check out the next component, which is in class component, the component did mount lifecycle method is called after the component has been added to the DOM. We would simply write component did mount. It doesn't require any argument to pass. Here we can build our business logic or most of the time we call our API calls. This is a great place to perform side effects that are necessary only once when the component is initially mounted. In functional components, we utilize the use effect hook to mimic the behavior of component did mount. The function inside use effect is executed after the component mounts and the optional cleanup function provides similar functionality to component will unlock. The key difference is that component did mount is a lifecycle method in the class component while use effect is a hook that can handle multiple life cycles scenario and functional components. I hope you have understood this syntax of component did mount and the equivalent of use effect. Now let's check out the last not the least component will unmount. In class component, the component will unmount lifecycle is method is invoked just before the component is removed from the DOM. We would simply write component will unmount method without passing any argument inside the function. Here we can perform our cleanup before the component unmount. It's a crucial place to perform cleanup tasks such as clearing intervals or cancelling network request. In function component, we use use effect hook with an empty dependency array to mimic the behavior of component when unmount. The cleanup function inside use effect is executed when the component is about to unmount. Both component will unmount and use effect cleanup function are designed for executing cleanup tasks before a component is removed from the DOM. They provide a reliable way to release resources and avoid memory leak. While the purpose is the same, it's essential to note that component when unmount is specific to class component, while the use effect clean function is part of more versatile use effect hook in functional component. And there you have it. We have explored the equivalence between React class component and hook for various life cycle method. Before you go, let's take a quick look at some practical example of each function in action. This way you can see how they work in real time applications. Let's first check the constructor. Inside the use effect block, fetch initial data. This function is assumed to perform actions typically done in constructor. It's a placeholder for any setup logic that needs to happen when component mounts. The empty dependency array as a second argument to use effect ensures that effect runs only once after the initial mount. So now that you have understood, let's move on to next component. Next we have component did mount method from react component lifecycle. We can achieve a similar effect using use effect hook. Take a look at this code. 
Inside the use effect block, there is a simulation of data fetching. It simulates a network request by fetching data from this dummy API call, which is api.example.com. Using the fetch API, the fetched data is then processed using promises and said data is called to update the component state. Then we have empty dependency array in the use effect. It ensures that effects runs only once after the initial mount. This mimics the behavior of component did mount in class component. The subsequent component is the component will unmount lifecycle method in react class component. In this case, the cleanup function is located within the return statement. This function is executed when the component is about to unmount, serving the purpose of component will unmount in class component. It is used for cleanup tasks like clearing timer, cancelling network request, removing event listeners, or cleaning up any resources. If dependency well specified, the effect would run whenever any of these dependency changes. In this case, it runs once because the dependency array is empty. Following that, we encounter the get drives state from props. Examine the content within the use effect block. Const new state equals to calculate new state. Calculates a new state based on current props using the calculate new state function. This function is assumed to be defined elsewhere in the component or its context. Then the next condition checks if the newly calculated state is different from this current state. If it is, it updates the state using the set state function. This ensures that state is only updated if there is a change. The dependency array props is passed as a second argument to the use effect. This is very important. This means that the effect will run whenever the props variable changes. In other words, uh, it's triggered whenever there is a change in props passed to the component. Next up is the should component update method from React class component. We have created my function component as a functional component using React memo function. React memo function is a higher order component that memoizes the rendering, the rendered output of component and re-renders only if the prop change. Inside this component, there is a local state variable count initialized to zero using the use state rule. The component renders a paragraph showing the current count value and a button that increment the count when clicked. The second argument to react memo is a custom comparison function that determines whether the component should re-render. In this case, it compares the count prop of the previous and next props. In this specific example, the component will re-render only if the count props changes. Ignoring other props, this is beneficial when you have a component that relies on specific props and you want to prevent re-renders when unrelated props change. The subsequent slide features get snapshot before update. Take a look at this JavaScript code, const ref equals to use ref. This hook is used to create a mutable object ref that persists across renders. In this case, it's used to reference a DOM element. So if you see inside the use effect block, const value before update equals to ref dot current dot value. It access the value of the reference DOM element before any update. The ref dot current dot property allows you to access current value of the referenced DOM element. Then we have given console dot log which will output the value before the update to the console. Last we have dependency array. The dependency array is intentionally left empty, indicating that this effect does not depend on any specific prof or state changes. It runs once after the initial render and does not rerun unless explicitly specified. Following that is component did update. Observe this block of code within the user effect. We have written console.log it outputs a message to the console indicating the console has been updated. The body of use effect function is where you can perform actions that should happen after the component updates. This is an analog to the component did update lifecycle method in the class component. Keep in mind that absence of dependency in the dependency array means that the effect will run after every render. If there are specific dependency that the effect relies on, you should include them in the array to control when the effect should run. Lastly, 
the component did catch equivalent using the use effect hook that ups and cleans up the global error event listener here we executes the provided callback function when an error occurs with the dependency array callback ensuring the effect update with any changes to the callback function within the use effect block an event handler function is called error handler attempts to execute the provided callback function during an error the try catch block prevents the callback errors from affecting the application globally the code also adds an error event as well here we have added error event listener to the window object and included in the cleanup function to remove the event listener when component is unmounted preventing memory leak i hope this comparison helps you understand how to migrate from class component to function component using hooks if you found value in this video then see that subscribing to support our channel club and don't forget to give it a thumbs up so that youtube can recommend to our audience before you go i i really recommend checking out our next video you can find the link in the comment section below thanks for watching this video and atid not and go bring any love with big side see you in the next exciting video